Now folks, it's Andy here from Rust in the Woodsman. So, I'm up in Scotland. I mentioned in my last video that we were coming up here for a few days to visit family. It was uh, my birthday a couple of days ago, on Wednesday the 10th. Today's Friday. And uh, I wanted to try and get here. One just to see if it was still standing. This was um, a little bushcraft camp that I started probably about four and a half, nearly five years ago. Uh, I never got around to finishing it or like building a natural an actual shelter over the top of it because I ended up moving down England with the army but I've got a raised bed here and it's you know still good to go and I also built myself a little fireplace at the back so I found that piece of corrugated tin roofing when I was walking around here one day and I brought it to this spot I thought I'd make a good fire reflector and it has done I mean I've used that loads of times a little fireplace there as well it's just a big circle of rocks with soil put into the centre of it Stops the fire from burning down into this, you know, all this duff from the Norway spruces because this what this woodland is, it's just Norway spruce growing basically just to be logged. But, um, yeah, so I've got my, my cast iron Dutch oven with me, I've got a bit of lamb and some potatoes, carrots, and whatnot. I'm gonna roast them over the fire in the Dutch oven once I get it going. But I need to get my tarp up, it's not supposed to rain tonight, but just for argument's sake, I'm gonna get it up anyway and then. Get my kit out and get started. It's got a bit of lamb shoulder there for the roast dinner and in my tap kit. So I get the shelter up now just so it's done and then I'll start cutting some firewood. Later, boy. So that's the tarp up. I didn't film too much of it, it's, I'm sure you've seen a lean-to go up hundreds of times before. But yeah, it's just a paracord ridge line from tree to tree, and then prussic knots on the corners of the tarp just to hold it against the ridge line, and then peg down at the back. There's a lot of space here at the back, so I'll keep my kit, and then also Rusty's bed can go down there and he can he can sleep in there. But I've got a, I need to cut some firewood yet, um, but I've got a little bit of work to do, like on the pegs and that to the the legs of the raised bed and also the the stakes that are holding up the corrugated tin for the fire reflector to the fire. I used jute twine to like you know tie them together and I was like it's it's done the whole point is if I, if I never ever got to come back here then you know it would just decay away. Um, which it has done. The jute twine it's decayed and fallen away. I can't even find it like just lying around so I'll um replace those just because that's looking a bit rickety at the minute the fire reflector hey, bud. What's this? and then I'll cut some firewood as well but I'll get my kit out of the bag get everything sort of how I want it before I start doing any of that sort of work so the stuff I brought with me is I've, I've got a bit of lamb shoulder there for the roast dinner that I'm going to do in my Dutch oven in the top pouch of the top flap I've got my first aid kit, I've got my canteen pouch here, I've got my canteen, my titanium pot, in the front pouch I've got, I brought my front and steel kit and a chaff tin here, I've got my fur rod as well but if I can find some dry grass or bracken around the area then I'm going to have a crack with the front and steel. I've got the lid to the mug and a blue bin bag. There's a sow pouch here, but that was what I carried the camera kit in. And this sow pouch, it's just all bits and pieces really. So I've got three little spice jars, one with salt, one with pepper, and one with garlic salt. I've 
I've got my little cooks there, a little tin of berry tea. I've got a little hanging hook here with a Dutch oven, that's what I brought with me to cook in. I don't know if I'm going to hang it above the fire or just put it on the fire. We'll see how it goes, but I'm going to hang it, that's what I'll hang it with. I've got Rusty's water bowl and food bowl. I've got my spool of jute twine. I've got my wet wipes and toothpaste, toothbrush. I've got my cutting board for chopping the veg up in a bit. And my little wooden spoon that I carved out of birch. And the main bit of the pack. Got some food for Rusty. I mean, he'll, he'll be having some of the, the lamb roasting that with me. Got my head torch. Gloves for working around the fire. I've got a small Dutch oven here as well, the FT3. Got the axe for sorting the trees out. Got Rusty's bedroll. Got my roll mat. Just a shirt for later on if it gets a bit of chilly. Rusty's coat if it gets a bit chilly. And then my sleeping bag. And yeah, I've got my ferro rod on, and my knife on my belt, and my saw as well. And that is it, that's a lot. So yeah, the Dutch oven, Petromax sent it out to me a while ago now, a good few weeks ago, um, to use on the channel up at my bushcraft camp in Wales. But I ended up cracking my ribs, and I just didn't feel up to humping this through the bush and that, so... Yeah, this is the first time I'm going to use it. But I've got a, a couple of eggs here, but that's for, that's for breakfast tomorrow in the morning. So I've got some potatoes, an onion, and a couple of carrots. And I'm going to roast all those along with the lamb tonight. Hopefully I'll manage to fit it all in somehow, but... But yeah, that is the plan. So a lot of people already know this, but I'm going to make a point of mentioning it because it's not too far from my camp. So this big branch here isn't actually a branch. It's the top of this Norway spruce where it's broken off there into a couple of pieces and got hung up in the trees around it. Now most people would have spotted this because it is fairly low to the ground and it is really big. But some of these things can get hung up quite high up in the tree and be difficult to look for it, especially if you're not actually actively looking for them. And if you happen to camp under that tree that night, that night could be the time it comes down. And they're called widow makers, and obviously for a good reason as well. It's just a vivid reminder of why you should always look up and around your campsite. Come on bud, up you come. Nah, no. that's far as you're going. So down there, through all that, well, you, you can't see it, but down there is my, where the camp is, my tarp and my raised bed. 
So this sort of sloped all the way up and then about there, sort of behind this tree it, it levels out and then it slopes upwards again to the main path. You'll never see it but yeah. And then down here, you know, you've got this dry stained wall and a little fence. Because you've got hills here and sort of moors and whatnot, and there's sheep in them. And these dry stained dikes have got like, you know, gaps in them where that's crumbled down. So I think the farmers put this fence up here to stop them, you know, disappearing up this side into the, the woods and whatnot. I don't know if the camera's picking up the noise, but along there, there's a stream. So yeah, like, this spot's kind of got everything I want really, you know, it's, you know, fresh water, plenty of dead standing for firewood, plenty of kindling of the, the Norway spruces themselves. I mean, the camp now is just a raised bed and it's just a fireplace and the plan was always to, you know, make it like a proper little camp with a, a lean-to roof and whatnot. It's just, obviously I live in England, so by the time it came round to actually doing it, getting stuck into it, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the time to get it finished before I end up moving down England. But yeah, so we'll be back up in Scotland. Well, the wife and kids will be back up in Scotland in July. So I've moved them up here and I've got to go back down and do the last few months down there. And then I'll be coming back up sort of November time, middle of November to beginning of December. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get on this camp and get a lot of work done to it. Because I mean, like, there's a lot of this, you know, this duff off the the Norway spruce and that, so I can use that to help thatch it. And I can start leaving things here then, that way I can like, you know, the, the Dutch oven, rather than bringing it up here every time, I can I can leave it here. And you know, tools, you know, I'll make a bow saw, and uh, I'll probably make an axe, get like a cheap axe head off of the uh, eBay, put a handle on it, and leave that here. And that way I've got a few tools that I don't have to bring with me. Cause about an hour's walk to get here, so bringing in like a, you know, the, the small forest axe, the the, the uh, Dutch oven, and other bits and pieces, it's pretty heavy, pretty hard going, especially when I have to all the way up this hill tomorrow to get out of here. But yeah, it's all fun and games, all things to look forward to. But anyway, I need to get my finger out and find myself another another. A bit of dead standing that I can cut down. There's lots of it, but it's really thick. I don't want to be cutting a thick bit down for nothing. I'll save it till I'm actually back up here and doing things properly. But just for a night. Yeah, so I'll see what I can find. So yeah, I found a couple of pieces that I sawed up and added to the, the wood pile over there. I don't need too much. I'm not looking to have it through the night. It's just, just to cook cook the roast on in the Dutch oven. So I only need to go on for a couple of hours really. But yeah, I haven't been idle, you know, other than cutting the wood, I've been grabbing myself some tinder there, or tinder kindling even. Uh, in the sort of, the hills over there, there's some dry grass, so I'm gonna go over there and grab some of that in a bit. Um, I've got a little bit of char wood to use with the flint and steel, but I'm gonna need to make more. And these are a couple of old pieces of ash. I cut them down, um, not today, a while, like a long, long time ago, when I first sort of started coming to this spot. And uh, they originally were part of one of the legs of a tripod, but they started to decay a lot, and um, I'm sort of punky. So I'm thinking what I'll do is use this to make some char wood. See, it just basically smashes to pieces, really. It's about 3 o'clock now. We've got this night light. This is the one that Lavivert sent me a while back. I'll put that up there for later on when it starts getting dark. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, coming up for 20 to 3. I've got a couple more things I want to do. Yeah, I need to collect some dry grass from over there. And I'm going to start getting the food prepped. And then probably about before half four. I'll get the fire going, 
and start cooking up some food. So I think what I might do is just have a bit of a chill out for a bit. I found myself another bit of dead sand in, so I thought I'd cut it down just to just to be safe because this this will burn first. So yeah, that's my log pile for the rest of the day and evening. I think what I'll start doing now is getting the the meal ready. It's 20 to 4 now, so I'll start preparing the food, and then after that I'll get the fire going. Turns out I took an injury when I was cutting that tree down. The saw hit my knee, but I don't think I don't feel any pain or anything. So I thought it just ripped the material in my my trousers. But no, I've got about three little mini mouse in my knee now. So yeah, watch out for those silkies, folks. Can't remember the last time I had to use my first aid. I'm going to chuck a wee plaster on it. Give it a wipe with an alcohol pad. And then put a plaster on it. And that one will do. So yeah, I just get a clean with the alcohol wipe because that saw blade is not the cleanest. Nippy. Let it dry a minute. And when I get home tomorrow, I'll have a little sewing job with my trousers to do. These 5.11 strike pants, they're, uh, they're rip stops, so this, rot, this rip should basically not get any worse than what it is. And then, uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll be able to get home and sew it up and do it right.